Now to the latest on last night's midterm elections. A shift in the balance of power on Capitol Hill. Both sides, though, claiming victory after Democrats flipped the House and Republicans held on in the Senate. Kristen Holmes is in Washington, D.C. And Kristen, what's this mean for the next two years on Capitol Hill? Well, Ken, think a lot of gridlock and a lot of pressure on the president's top Democrats who are slated to become the leads of committees like the Judiciary and the Oversight Committee already calling for investigations. And this is just the beginning. Other folks, that's that enough. A combative President Trump. Excuse me, that's enough. Well, I'm not a big fan of yours either. So excuse me, would you please sit down? Please? The day after a split decision on Washington. Democrats flipping the House, taking control for the first time since 2010. Women led the way to victory with at least 30 new women coming to the Congress. Is that not exciting? Republicans adding to their majority in the Senate. Had a very good day. Uh, proud of what happened. This, that President cases, Trump taking credit for chairman. Republican gains. We saw the candidates that I supported achieve tremendous success last night. And slamming GOP and candidates and by name to, who didn't embrace him. Mia Love gave me no love. And she lost. Too bad. Sorry about that, Mia. Voters delivering the first national referendum on President Trump since his upset victory in 2016, indicating the president weighed heavily on their minds when casting their ballots. Experts predicting more gridlock in Washington. President Trump and likely House Speaker Nancy Pelosi going head to head. And of course, the MS-13 lover, Nancy Pelosi. Seemingly unlikely to find common ground on critical issues like health care or immigration. I President Trump, at least for today, striking an optimistic I tone. I would like to see bipartisanship. I'd like to see unity. And I think we have a very good chance of, and maybe not on everything, but I think we have a very good chance of, of seeing that. And Kent, there's a lot of drama already in Washington, and there are still uncalled races. I just want to point to two that we're watching very closely. One of them is this Arizona Senate race. Uh, neck and neck here still as the ballots are being counted between these two women who are vying to become the first female senator from the state of Arizona. We are learning that this race might actually not be called until later in the week because there are over a million uncounted early ballots. The other one, of course, being Florida, watching that carefully after Bill Nelson called for a recount. Just to be clear, he cannot do that. That has to come from the Secretary of State. No word on that just yet. Back to you. Uh, and we'll know that happens if it's within that certain margin, margin uh, below 0.5%. And Kristen, we know that last night was an historic win for women. So break it down for us. Well, that's right, Kent. We have been talking about this leading up to the election. There was a historic number of women running, and now there is going to be a historic number of women in the House and Senate. So far, there have been 98 races uh, that have been projected for as a women, uh, excuse me, as a women winner. Uh, there are also two races that are women running against one another. So there will be at least 100 female House members uh, come the next uh, cycle here in January. And then when it comes to the Senate, You've got 12 there as well. We're looking to see what happens in Arizona, but either way, it will be a history-making day. We know that in Tennessee, Marsha Blackburn is the first female to become a senator there. Uh, so a lot of celebration of women from both Democrats and Republicans. All right. Kristen, appreciate the report. Kristen Holmes reporting from Washington, D.C.